cross and stretches. For this one on this side, we're going to use thumb. Same type of move as the counter stream, but just in the opposite direction. How does this feel? Good. Good. A little bit more powerful move here. Make sure that your client's ready for it. Okay. At this time, you could choose to do a PNF stretch. Would you like to resist against the pillow 30%? Good. Relax. We're going to go on into the scalene scoop. There's a couple of different ways to do this. You can do it from underneath, bring them over to the side, and then you move their head as you're scooping into the scalene starting at the SCM. Or you can do it same side, counter strain, starting from the back, scooping up into the scalene. So this is what my hand on the other side is doing. Sc scooping in, stopping at any tight muscle because it's not letting you go. So from this side that would look like this. And my hand again is going like this, getting hooked on one of her scalenes. Could be splenus capitis or cervicus, which is a little on the tight side. Then as it releases, you can feel it roll underneath your fingers and go. Okay, press and stretch the scalenes at the clavicle. This is really good for myofascial restrictions, which you do get with the scalenes and the SCM. Repeat the other side. And typically you do find one side more restricted than the other. Sometimes it's the side that they hold with the phone or purse or whatever that stays restricted. Okay, Carl's neck routine. For this penny I have to ask a favor of you. Mm -hmm. I need for you to scoot down to the end of the table so that your head is actually off the table. Okay. Okay. I, I am supporting your head. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Now, this neck routine comes from Carl, who used to teach for us. It was a physical therapist. Some people love this work, and it really worked well for them. Other people were a little nervous with it, so that's why this is optional. My fingers are pressing right in, gently, to the spinous processes as the head comes back. How does that feel to you? Good. You're not getting dizzy or anything, are you? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a good move for anyone that's had whiplash. Now this stretch is a little bit different. We're taking chin to the side of the shoulder that you're stretching down. So you feel it in a different area of your neck. Okay. Repeat on the other side. Bring chin towards that side. Do that a little bit further. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Some gentle kneading before we finish up with this work. We can take it into the stretches from here if you'd like. Cross arm stretch. Up really slow. Let the head gently turn to the other direction. Stretch. Down. We're going to repeat. Cross arm stretch. Well. And to end with the neck work, we're going to do a nice traction pull with the meltdown. See, she even goes farther this time. You do the traction pull by hooking the forearm into the occiput and stretching this way. How's that feel? Good. Uh, some people will choose to use a towel and hook it right here and pull back. Sometimes that hurts the ears though, so you gotta be careful of that one. You can even use the pillow a little bit. If this hurts your ears, let me know. You yep. feel the traction? Yep. Okay, no pressure here, just a, kind of like a little anchor pillow. What you're looking for with this, if you could see, her toes are moving up towards her head with this traction pull. Next, we're going to go on down to the shoulder. 
Now the shoulder routine is wonderful for anyone that has frozen shoulder, which means that they cannot do a, a movement like brushing their hair. If that movement hurts, or if you say take your client back this way and they had limited range of motion and their shoulder stopped about here. These moves are going to be wonderful for that. So after effleurage, the typical knuckle effleurage, working in coracobrachialis, do that one again, flat hand knuckles, coracobrachialis, pec major, turn hand to the other side. If their arm doesn't go down like this, you need to work those appropriate flexors. Biceps, and on up, forearm, and fist twist from here, forearm work, brachioradialis is sometimes tied in people so you can spend a little bit more time there. Typically you may want to stop here and do a trigger point, and on up. Okay. We're going to wrap the arm, get it loose. We're going to do a counter strain to the scapula, the um, subscapularis. We're going to put a fist right into the scapula to push it in. Bring the arm over. How does that feel, Penny? Good. Good. Okay. From this, you could choose to leave the arm there and do the north, south, east, west for the scapula to see if there's any restrictions that you haven't released yet. She feels pretty good, but this is a great position to scoop into the subscapularis. I am going on top of the scapula from the side position, scooping down, in, and out, rolling it out. And that can be very sensitive on people who haven't had their subscapularis worked in the past. This can also get the teres minor right there. Okay, how's that feel? Good, good. All right, then we're going to go to bicipital groove. The bicipital groove is restricted. Roll it back into place. You can feel a little bump there. Good. Then we're going to take the arm above the head, what's ever comfortable. And work from here, friction the triceps, all the way down, teres. What I'm going to do is my arm's going to go across the body and below to hook into the ASIS to stretch it down for a whole thorax stretch on this side. So that Okay, after the stretch, do a little bit more rock and now we're going to do a soft tissue release for the pecs. Start gently. Grab into the pecs, then try it again. Can roll the arm around. Now if her pecs were tight, this would be really sore, so be gentle with your client. You want to check pec minor right here, friction it. Clavicle sweep. Press, press, stretch, press, stretch for the soft tissue releases. You can also get a further stretch, a nerve stretch, by Stretching the hand all the way back. Okay. Good. Now we're going to start with the chest. It's a few different chest moves that we're going to do, so I'm going to move over here. Next to her sternum and on her sternum, everyone has neural lymphatic reflex points, which when we find a sore one, we're going to stay there and work it for around 10 seconds. This technique actually comes from Touch for Health and Applied Kinesiology. And by releasing these neural lymphatic reflex points, it can strengthen weakened muscles just by working with this. All of these correlate to neck and shoulder muscles right in here. Okay. The next move we're going to do is a lymphatic pump move. And for this penny, I need your attention. I need for you to take some really slow, deep breaths. Inhale and exhale, as she exhales, you'll feel your hand sinking deeper and deeper, and then you hold it at that depth. You don't let it release, and she still keeps on taking a deep breath. Good, exhale. 
Good. Now on this third deep breath as she starts it, you release quickly and that restarts the lymph system in the thorax, which has a lot to do with the cleansing and the circulatory system. So that's a good move to do for anyone that feels tightness in the chest or their ribs may be out. That's a great one. Uh, also good for the rib cage. For the first rib, you go from the mastoid process down. And again, you're going to be doing these moves on the people that you feel as though have thoracic outlet syndrome, uh, the restricted range of motion of the shoulder. These are all things that you need to check. And hers actually feels fine. I would actually feel uh, the first rib right here if it was out, but we will just imagine that it's out. What I'm going to do is bring her shoulder up, ask her to keep a straight arm and a fist. Straight arm and fist. Okay, straight arm and fist. Wake up. A straight arm and fist. <laughs> you keep moving. Okay. I keep waiting yeah. for you. Keep right. on towards your feet. All the way down. Keep on pushing. All the way down. And push. Okay, we're going to do that one more time. And I'm going to bring your shoulder up. My finger is going to stay on that first rib. Straight arm, fist. Push me down away from you towards your feet. Good. And that works with the first rib. And a lot of times you'll actually feel it releasing. This, this move is a little bit different. This is for the second and third ribs. We're going to put the thumbs in the axillary area. You're going to do a similar move in which you're going to lift the shoulder towards the ear. And now, Penny, push me away from you and down. Away and down. And we're going to repeat that. Away and down. And that works for the second and third ribs. So by the time you've done all that, they should have full range of motion of their arm. If they don't, don't forget to do the PNFs, the resistance stretches for that, and that should help a great deal. So we'll work the subscapularis, teres, pec major, pec minor, subclavius, clavicle, scalenes, bicipital groove, deltoids, all the muscles involved with frozen shoulder. So that arm would be done after that. Okay, I'm going to first start with a counter strain for the femur. I'm going to get to a position that feels very soft and relaxing. That's pushing the femur into the joint capsule as I start to spread some oil. Okay, leave it in that position. We move on with the deep tissue moves. Forearm sweep across the top of the patella. Helps to release the quadricep hold on the patella. Forearm work and notice my body weight. Whole body weight's in there so that we've got some good pressure. Those quadriceps can really take some good deep pressure, not unless there's a lot of domes. Okay. You can do both arm sweep. Tibialis anterior, quads, peroneus. Iliotibial band. Okay. From here, we're going to do a move that you're familiar with, where we sit on the foot and work the gastrox. The ringing. Pez answering group below the medial knee where all these adductors come on down and insert. And the head of the fibula, where gallbladder 34 is. And stomach 36, very important areas. Flange, around the kneecap, and on down adductors, and IT band. It's a lot of rocking going on for that. Okay, after you feel as though you've worked that well, we're going to put a protectant over the shoulder. You're going to bring the heel of the foot, rest it on your shoulder. Keep the knee bent for this one. And you're going to do a DTF with the knuckles. Gastrox. IT. Adductors 
more strings. Now some of this should look familiar to sports massage. Some of these moves are, are used during the sports massage, conditioning and training. Now switch from knuckles to forearm. Forearm all the way down, ischial tuberosity, and further. Repeat, elbow deep within. Okay. You can do a beating, then now bring it down for hamstring stretch. Okay. And then take the knuckles, down gastrox, hamstrings, okay. And you do not have to do things in this particular order, but from here I'm going to go ahead and take her leg over to the side to work the lateral rotators and glutes. With deep tissue, you're going to change it a little bit and use the elbow. I'm working down the tensor fascia latte, glute medius, glute maximus, minimus, piriformis, gemellus, and all those other little lateral rotators. How's that feel? Good. Good? Okay, can you repeat that? A little bit further down. Each time I'm working my way down to closer to the sacrum. Now, if they can't take the elbow, fist, or phalange, all the way down to the sacrum. I work all of those muscles. Respindling, push pulls for the iliotibial band. Okay, next I'm going to move the foot into position for a groin stretch. And with the groin stretch, I'm going to bring that heel very close to her hip. And then, here, I'm going to move this pillow down so that we are resting here and stretching all the way back and rocking. Now, many people won't go this far back the first time. It is something that you have to work with. But stretch as far back as you can and rock. This is a groin stretch. And then you're going to counter strain the groin from a stretch to a counter strain. So bring the foot up and down in and press the knee down into the groin. Of course, you wouldn't put pressure on the knee if they had knee issues. Bring it on down to the side. Adductors, we can reset the spindles if the adductors are tight. Again, doing push pulls. Forearm effleurage, arm saws, jostle, rock, okay, bring the leg down, let's work on the kneecap a little bit, just like the scapula, move it north, south, east, west, okay, Press the kneecap down and friction. Kneecap up, friction. Tell us side, friction, and side, friction. We introduce the Pazanserin group. The side of the knee. We're going to do a little STR, tibialis anterior. Peroneus, and go into a stretch for the iliotibial band. You don't have to move here, fine. Just going to take the leg over this way. A straight leg for the tibia. A straight leg is really important because of where it inserts. And she, again, just like when we did the other side, she can do a resistance from here. Resist back. Where do you feel that? What muscle do you feel that in, Penny? Uh, more in the hamstrings, but hamstrings? my hamstrings are a mess. Okay. A little bit the TFL. But we're not on the other side, so we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> and relax. You can also do the PNF for the hip. Focusing on piriformis. Resist up. Okay. 
Okay, and relax. Bring it back over to the side, taking the draping with you. Okay, I'm going to check the leg length, and it is perfect. You can do bring both feet together, see if there's a restriction in the movement of each one. When one side doesn't move as well, that means the psoas is tight on that side. We've worked this leg, her left leg, quite well, so that psoas is very relaxed. This one is still restricted on her left leg. Let's do a little pull. If there was still a difference in leg length, you could take the short leg and uh, pull out for 30 seconds to try to reset in that direction. Okay. Okay, let's check the scapula, north, south, east, west. Get a good movement flowing. Make sure it's moving very well, which it is because we've already done some work. I'm going to go ahead and start with the upper quadrant. Doing an effleurage, spread the oil on up. Are you okay with getting a little oil in your hair, Penny? No, I'm fine with that. Okay, good. Then take the sweep behind the ear all the way up into the scalp with a little hair pull. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with the knuckles, flat knuckles, triceps, the top of the shoulder, traps, levator, scalenes, hook into the occiput, and up the ear and into the hair, and a little tug if they like it. Arm saws, neck, knuckles, elbows, you can use just about anything in this position. Okay, while I'm doing this, keep in mind that I also have the traction pull on the shoulder to pull it down. From the neck, we are going to bring the arm back and we are going to work the pecs. We're going to focus on the clavicle. We've done quite a bit of that. Scalenes, put one finger above and below the clavicle. Start at the sternum and work the subclavius on over, pec major. Check out pec minor, see if that's tight. And if it is, we will do a stretch for that, which is coming up. Okay, we're going to, if they are comfortable, if you are comfortable with this, you can rest their arm on your waist. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Okay, that gives you a little bit more traction here. This is a latissimus dorsi release. This actually releases the lats from this position because of the, the um, insertion point on the iliac. And while you're doing this, get a little rock going. And we're going to friction pec minor. We're going to friction corcobrachialis, bicipital groove, which is the origin point and insertion of many muscles, very important to do. Okay. Deltoids. Okay, how's that stretch to you? Does that feel good? Oh, I like it. Okay, let's see if we can get her further down towards the table. The goal of this one is to see if you can actually get the shoulder to the table with the hip up for a really good thoracic stretch, which that's not too bad. Okay, from here we're going to work infraspinatus. Hook on to super or subscapularis and get into the rhomboids for press and counter strain. This is a yummy one. Yeah, feels good. Okay. Super spinatus. Moving scap. Levator scap and on up. So we've worked the neck, shoulder, the back. Now we're going to take the arm up above the head and stretch. Okay, go. Stretch as far as comfortable for the client. From this position you can work a lot of the different muscles. I'm going to rest her arm on her head if she's comfortable with that. How's that feel? Good. Okay. If, if you'd like, you can put a, a, an extra towel on there. From here, I'm going to focus on subscap, teres, 
bringing the scapula down, ribs, in between the ribs, pushing on the erectors to give a little bit of stretch to the erectors. Okay, now I'm at the QL in which I'm going to do the vibration for gallbladder 30 and the QL. Make sure you have it. If you're not sure if you have the QL, have them hike it for you. <laughs> Sure you've got it. Yeah, I'm sure I've got it. <laughs> That's a hard one to learn in the beginning. And you can do a sweep from the ASIS, bringing everything all the way back. It actually feels a little myofascial. You can feel the myofascial restrictions on many people. Okay, we'll bring this arm. Nice stretch. And she goes a lot further back this time. She can have her arm back. And now we're going to do a little bit more back work with deep tissue work, a lot of forearm work on the back, very similar to when you did a face down. We don't need that there. Stretch with one forearm on the sacrum. Forearm down. Push pulls, particularly on her lower back because that's the area that she feels the tightest. Push pulls do the respindling of the weak muscles. So it's a very good move to do for people who have a muscle imbalance. Circles of the spinous processes of the vertebrae. Serpentine, feeling in between.